Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Melly or Via. And as we've got our orange lights on, you can tell fall is coming. I'm up here with Mikey. As always, you know, I'm sorry, I'm the culprit behind that. I thought it was a great idea, and John rightfully agreed. So I yeah. did, I did, though I feel like we should be doing something spookier than what we have on tap today. Yeah, you're right. What though, do we have on tap today? Well, honestly, though, the thing we're talking about is a licensed product that I think I was first exposed to in the fall because it was a show that came on with the fall season, and I kind of associate it with Back to School era. Really? Yeah. So nostalgia and for you. Yeah, it definitely is. This is a piece of 80s licensing, and it is the Robotech RPG from Strange Machine Games. Now, have you heard of Robotech before much, Yeah, Marky? I have heard of Robotech, but okay. like... To me, it was just one big thing because there's battle tech that I've heard of, and it just seems like it's probably not related. It, it actually is related. Okay, well, so I'm sure you'll touch Robotech on that. Robotech was created by a company called Harmony Gold that got the license to several Japanese animated series, uh, Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospita, and brought them over to the U.S. to put into syndication. But none of those series had enough episodes to meet the syndication criteria of TV in the 80s. So they kind of hooked them all together to make one big story and tied them together into the Robotech saga. Now, the book we're talking about today is just focused on Macross. So I'm going to just talk about Macross and kind of the way they hooked things together. Uh, maybe offended a few folks out in the community. Uh and the way their licensing works meant that a lot of other Macross stuff couldn't come into the U.S., which bothered a lot of fans of anime, too. And some of the licensing hijinks got a little weird, and that's how the folks at FASA sort of indirectly got a license to use some of the same ro ro robots that appeared in Robotech in the Battletech game. So, yeah, both of those products are connected. And don't hate me, people, but can you define Macross? So Macross is the original TV series, and there was a whole bunch of Macross spinoff media that came later, uh, and it talked about the Super Dimensional Fortress 1. Okay. The SDF-1, and the SDF-1 crash-landed on Earth, and Earth kind of unified behind the SDF-1, and scrambled to uncover the technology that was part of the STF-1 to build their oh. own defense force and use it to defend Earth from the invaders that showed up looking for the SDF-1. Okay. And those were the Zentradi. And the Zentradi are giants. They're kind of the big bads of the Macross era of Robotech. Interesting. Yeah. And the technology that they developed were these robots that were powered in the Robotech version by Protoculture, and they had, uh, you know, basically walking tanks, and then they also had transforming planes. So these were planes that look an awful lot like an F-14 Tomcat, except they could also fly in space, and they could transform from that fighter jet mode into a basically uh, giant android. Okay, so yeah. basically Transformers inspired off of... There are... Certainly common is that, themes is that with a, Transformers. Is that a and, claim to make? Uh, the Skyfire Transformer okay. was imported from, it was made by Bondi. It was originally a Veritech fighter. Okay, so if so, the government... Yeah, there's makes, a tie-in there for Transformers, If the too. government decides to make a jet that can go to space as well, they're kind And of, that can turn into a robot, yeah. We absolutely. know who they're inspiring on. No of. question about it. So this particular... And when that came in, there was a lot of other media that came in at the same time. There were models, there were toy lines, there were comic books, there were novels, and there was a role-playing game that Palladium published in the 80s up through the 90s, and then they did a new edition of it that my buddy Jason Marker worked on, and then they did a miniatures game that we won't talk about anymore, <laughs> uh, and then Strange Machine Games got the license to make this one, and this came out in 2019. Jeff McClinsky and Brian Young, are the two guys behind it and with a name like Meklinski, it doesn't surprise me at all that yeah. uh, he worked on a mecha book right <laughs> right uh, they have also published a superhero game called super age and they did a 2021 kickstarter to make the masters and new generation versions of the robotech setting that had about 550 backers raised about seventy thousand dollars and it also uses the advantage d6 system the advantage six system it, that's presented in this book. This is a dice pool system. Generally, the way the game mechanics work is you need to roll a five plus for a success, and then you count up the number of successes you get. 
walking through the game system, character creation, you choose either a Zentradi or a human. Now remember those Zentradis are generally giants, but they can get micronized so that they look mostly like other humans. Just eight foot, maybe eight foot. No, no, normal human size. Like six, they okay. go through what's called the micronization they system. They can go under process. six foot? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. In fact, one of the main characters is a dwarf Zentradi, okay. essentially. So he's, you know, like four foot six-ish. Okay. Uh, then you pick a class, which can be entertainer, marine, officer, pilot, spy, technician, or volunteer. You select your skills. There are no attributes in this game system. Uh, and then you pick your nature, which is broken down into a, a disposition and a demeanor, and your character's talent. Uh, then you're going to create a health, a burnout, and a speed. Uh, and there's a drama fatigue system where uh, you can have botches, or, but those can ultimately contribute to dramatic successes later. Uh, and there's a lot of example characters that are presented from the series right here after the character creation role section so that you have a good handle on how those characters might be presented within the game system. After character creation, it dives into a skills and talents and game mechanics system. It talks about challenges and the types of tests the characters might need to make during a game session and what success on those tests could mean. Difficulties range from one to five. Uh, and it's kind of a different system because the skills aren't the types of skills that I'm used to seeing in most traditional tabletop RPG, they're not, you know, like academic er areas. Some of these skills are, uh, well, really well tied into the anime. You know, they're themed so that these are skills that might enable you to replay some of the scenes in the source material, like star quality. Is star quality? Yeah. What is that? What is that? You Just... know, like your stage presence. Okay. I'm a star. One okay. of the main characters in really all the Robotech sagas were musicians. Okay, so right? major star quality. Exactly. But then another one is rapid fire, right? So it's not just accuracy with a gun. It's very specifically my ability to shoot a gun on automatic mode very rapidly. Nice. Yeah. And then some are academic, like psychoanalysis or I can fix it. I right? can fix it. Yes, yeah. I can fix it is clearly a skill. Yeah. Um, and when you go to perform an action, you're going to pick two of your skills and kind of combine your pool from those two skills. Uh, sometimes characters can undertake a particularly heroic action that does come at a cost. There's going to be a dramatic element that your character has to kind of pay for when with they undertake those power. heroic actions. Exactly. There with great power some, comes yes. responsibility, yes, right? You know that line. Uh, and gears and talents are mostly situational modifiers that will affect how things are going to go. Uh, the next section after that are there's a 35 page section on the united earth defense force and a 25 ish page section on the zentradi these present the vehicles and the mecha and the gear and the upgrades that are themed to both the earth human forces and the zentradi invading alien forces uh then there's about 35 pages of conflicts uh this breaks down how combat can work with rounds and actions uh, and also has a good discussion about narrative combat versus simulationist combat. If I say that, does that mean anything to you at all? I'm guessing narrative is more like the D and D aspect where you're narrating the combat. Well, when you're telling a story, right? So yeah, if you're, you're describing just, how things are going to happen, it. where a simulationist means I'm going to break down and go, okay, so now I'm going to parry that attack and then I'm going to roll under the table and you know dive for cover okay. and get into the very nitty gritties of what happens instant by so instant simulation and whether you is succeed very specific. at each of them. Absolutely. Simulation tends to be how well am I going to reflect reality, whereas narrative tends to be more storytelling. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's some really nice, well put together examples here that play through a scene from different perspectives and you get to look at how naval combat works so when you have these giant spaceships engaging each other in combat and then you have the civilians in the background who are taking on another role at the same time as this combat's happening and then you've got the mechs fighting out with their you know single pilots fighting at the exact same time and the system actually as presented here does a great job of blending all of those different elements together so that you can have characters active on each level to tell this whole story at the same time. Uh, after that, we get into setting material. There's about 70 pages of scenarios that are 
really well tied into the uh, TV episodes and anime of Macross. There's seven of them. They pretty much just walk you through the series. Uh, but then there's also some nice suggestions for others that come in here. And the last thing I really want to touch on is the artwork in this is absolutely fantastic. I love the cover. There was only one artist that I saw credited in here, so I think he did all of the interior art. His name is Francisco Etchart, and my apologies if I'm mispronouncing that name. But uh, this book is pretty lavishly illustrated, you know, even That's just cool. starting with the end pages and moving through, you can see all the different artwork of the mecha. You can see the characters as they're presented here. Uh, and just the shading, the quality of the artwork, it really pops. It really takes advantage of the fact that this is a full color book. And, you know, these stills that he's drawn here are every bit as good as what you're seeing in the source material animation. Yeah, it's very, in my opinion. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, this is a 260 page full color hardcover. We do have copies here on the shelf at Immortals Inc. It is 60 bucks. If you're a fan of Robotech or just a fan of giant robots fighting, stop in, check it out. I think it's really cool, and I think you might dig it too. Well said, John. Someone actually already came and bought this two days ago, and I was letting him know that <laughs> video's on the way. So check it out. All right. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Till next time, folks. Good gaming.